Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I am gonna share with you some of our favorite football snacks. So this past weekend, the Jaguars played and I made all of our favorite football foods. And so I thought I'd show that guys. Try again. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some of our favorite football snacks. Um, Super Bowl is coming up quickly and these are just some of our favorite foods. I made them this past weekend when the Jaguars were playing and while they didn't win, that's okay. We are um, we were able to have friends over, enjoy some good food. So I thought I would just take you guys along with me and show you everything that I made for that. Just to maybe give you guys some inspiration or some ideas on what you can make for your Super Bowl party. So check that out now. Thanks so much. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with for the um, Super Bowl snacks is to get the chorizo in here. Now, I've already done a video on how I make my chorizo sausage. Um, I'm gonna add this on top of homemade um, cheese dip and so and serve it with tortillas. So we're gonna go ahead and get this going because all of these snacks are actually for tomorrow. Um, however, we need to um, let this marinate overnight. I wanna really make sure the flavors have some real depth to them. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get this put together first. Okay, so to the pork, we're gonna add in the paprika. It's gonna be three tablespoons of paprika. And remember, this is what gives it its really great color. Um, so you wanna make sure it seems like a lot, but it actually is the correct amount. And then to that, I'm gonna add in a half a tablespoon of cumin. And I'm just going to eyeball that right there. Um, I do have another video where I show how to make this. And just wanted to remind you, I know most of um, chorizos have cinnamon and cloves in there. And I did try this recipe like that because this is not my original, but I have altered the original. So I'll make sure to link it below. But I leave out the cinnamon and cloves. I personally did not um, like it. So to it, I've added the cumin. I've added dried ancho chili powder. This is what we made in the last video. And now I'm gonna be adding in a tablespoon of chili powder. And then add in a teaspoon of oregano. And this is Mexican oregano, not just regular oregano. And then I'm going to add in a teaspoon of coriander. I do add this. I found that I like that in there, but I did not like the cinnamon and the cloves. It just, it didn't work for us. Um, so you can either leave it in there or admit it. It's up to you. And then I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of just regular like kosher salt. I have sea salt, so that's what I'm going to add. And then we're going to add in some garlic. And you can mince two garlic cloves or you can take the shortcut and just have the already pre-chopped garlic which is exactly what i'm going to do so i'm going to add in a teaspoon of the garlic and so i'm just adding that right there and then it's going to be um, two tablespoons of white vinegar And then from here, I'm gonna use my hands and mix it all up. Um, just like in the last video, you really wanna make sure that all the spices get incorporated into the pork so it infuses all of the pork with flavor. And so, you know, just make sure that when you're done, you clearly wash your hands because you don't want any raw pork touching anything that's coming up next. All right, so I've got it all incorporated like this, and so I'm going to go ahead and get this in the fridge because it's going to sit till tomorrow morning, and or actually tomorrow afternoon when we make this, and then I'm going to get this cleaned up because I've got just a little bit of stuff on the countertop. So get this done, and then we'll move on to the next thing. 
Okay, so now that I have my chorizo in the fridge, I'm starting on the filling for my jalapeno poppers. And to my bowl, I am adding in one block of cream cheese. I'm also going to be shredding some cheddar cheese as well. I wind up adding just a little over one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. And so it, you can also add in just already pre-shredded cheese, it's up to you. We tend to just have a blocks of cheddar cheese in the house and so I just shred it myself. And then to that, I'm also gonna add in a half a teaspoon of garlic and then the bacon crumbles and that will be my filling for the jalapeno poppers. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time, to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall Okay, so I've got the filling done and now I've got my jalapenos washed and I'm going to go ahead and get them prepped to get them filled. Now I do this one particular way, but you can do it a couple of different ways. You can cut the tops off and then you can hollow out the center and then use a piping bag to fill them or you can cut them in half. I have found cutting them in half is just faster it gives you more and i just like it better it's just kind of how i created the recipe 10 plus years ago now if you don't have any gloves and you want to protect your hands you can take a paper towel around your finger and pull out the seeds that way or you can use a spoon um, typically i will use gloves if i have them in the house but unfortunately i was out the day that i did this Okay, so now that the jalapeno poppers are in the fridge and waiting for Saturday to finish assembling, I'm going to go ahead and get the banana dip done. This is one of those things that can be done either the day before or the day of either way doesn't really impact the flavor. Um, I will say that the color will change just ever so slightly if you make it the day before because of the bananas, but it's never enough to ch affect the taste or even really the look of it. it. It all works. I've done it both ways, day of and day before. So to my bowl, I've added in one package of cream cheese and I'm adding in half a stick or four tablespoons of butter. Both have been softened. I pulled them out about an hour before making this just to make sure that when I mix it together that they're soft and everything blends together well. If your cream cheese and your butter is cold, it takes longer to whip together and it's very possible because I've had it happen where the cream cheese doesn't want to blend in and so then you have chunks of cream cheese and you definitely don't want that in this dip. It is a very smooth, light, flavorful banana dip. You don't want to accidentally just bite into a chunk of cream cheese. Now to the cream cheese and butter, I add in one cup of powdered sugar. You want to slight, slightly sweeten the cream cheese icing, but not overwhelm it with sugar because we're also going to be folding in bananas and um, cool whip to it and that you don't want to make it too sweet. It's just got the right balance. When I was given this recipe, I wasn't really given an exact recipe. I was just told it was a mixture of cream cheese icing, Cool Whip, 
in bananas and so I kind of had to create this myself so I have found that no more than one cup of powdered sugar works best for this recipe now that the cream cheese icing is complete I'm going to go ahead and puree the bananas I like to use bananas that are yellow with no spots I want them to be um, just ripe enough to get that really good banana flavor but not overly ripe because when they are overly ripe the color will change a lot quicker when it comes to pureeing the bananas and adding that into the dip I feel like that's key to keeping this dip um, from changing colors especially if you make it the day before to make sure you don't want them under ripe but you want them to have just that right balance of ripe but not overripe, if that makes sense to anybody. So anyways, from here, I'm just gonna um, whip in the pureed bananas into the cream cheese icing. I wanna make sure that it is blended well together so all the flavor is incorporated. And then from there, I'm just gonna be folding in the Cool Whip. It is one eight ounce container of Cool Whip. And you just fold it in and once it's done, you're gonna go ahead and put it in your container and set it in your fridge and then just pull it out right before serving there's no need to bring it to room temperature you want to serve it cold and so that's all you need to do to really make this dip and again it goes with so many different fruits from strawberries raspberries blueberries blackberries pineapple apples I mean you could also even just slice up additional fresh bananas it is really really good Was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time, to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall Okay, now that I have the banana dip done, I'm going to start working on the caramelized onion dip. Now this is definitely one out of all the ones I've made ahead of time that really needs to be done the day before. You want to give this dip time for all the flavors to marry together and so I will link the original recipe below where I got it. Um, I do change it slightly. I only add in one large onion instead of two that like the original recipe calls for and that's just because I like a dip to be a little bit more on the creamy side so it's just a personal preference either way you go whether you do one or two onions this dip has so so much flavor this was a big hit this was definitely a favorite um, my mom absolutely loved it our friend loved it it was it's really really good so you are just going to take one onion and dice it up and then once it's diced up small um, you are going to place it in a pan with olive oil and butter you want to always when you're caramelizing onions you always want to add some oil to your butter just to raise the smoking point of the butter so that way it doesn't burn um, I also add in a little salt a little pepper and then sugar sugar helps to caramelize those onions you just want to make sure that you're very careful about the temperature that you're cooking it at because I have accidentally made the mistake of leaving it on too high and then because of the sugar I wound up burning my onions and having to start again okay now that uh, the onions are caramelizing and my mom was helping me take care of that so I could focus on getting the base of the dip put together it is really simple ingredients it is just one cup of mayonnaise and to that I just add everything into the bowl that I'm going to be storing it in there's no need to use a separate mixing bowl only to dirty up something else now to the mayonnaise I'm going to be adding in two cups of sour cream I find that this recipe is best by using full fat on everything I believe when I originally found this it may have said 
reduced fat sour cream and mayonnaise and I don't do that and so I find that the full fat gives it way more flavor so just so you know you can absolutely use a low fat version it's just not going to quite taste the same so to the mayonnaise and uh, the sour cream I'm adding in seasoned salt now I find that the Morton season salt works best in this you don't want like Lowry's season salt that will alter the taste and I do believe the original recipe years ago when I found it and printed it out said Morton's that's how I learned about it um, and have been using it ever since so it's going to be one teaspoon of the season salt it's also going to be one teaspoon of black pepper that I'm gonna add to it. And then from there, you're gonna also add in garlic and it's gonna be one teaspoon as well. After you add in the garlic, you're going to add in Worcestershire sauce as well. And for that, I believe it's just gonna be the one teaspoon. Okay, now that the dip has set aside, we're still working on the onions. This is about halfway through of where I like to take the caramelization on the onions. And now that it has a nice golden color with some brown to it, this is about where I stop. You can caramelize them longer, but I like it just about right here and once the onions have cooled um, you can go ahead and add them into your um, base of your dip you don't want to add them in when they're hot it should only take about 10 or 15 minutes if you remove them from the pan for them to cool now as you can see when I'm mixing it it is a very creamy onion dip which is how I prefer it. Now you cannot go wrong whether you add in two onions like the original recipe calls for or just the one, either way. This has so much flavor. By the time that this sat overnight and we enjoyed it the next evening, the flavor had penetrated all the way through the dip. It was wonderful and it was a huge hit. Now I have moved on to Saturday and this is a couple hours before game time and I wanted to go ahead and get the potatoes set and ready. I like to make homemade french fries and I like to make them um, crispy on the outside and tender on the inside and in order to accomplish that instead of either trying to deep fry them longer or fry them twice I decide to slice the potatoes and then toss them in olive oil and then bake them in the oven at 375 degrees for 15 minutes and what that does is it it par bakes them or partially bakes them through so that way when they fry they're not spending as much time in the deep fryer taking longer because this was not going to be the only thing that I would be frying um, for the night I would be working on the chicken wings as well so I was trying to keep things kind of moving along where they wouldn't spend a whole lot of time um, and this is just a great little hack to do because you can prep your potatoes ahead of time you can then let them cool and then um, you know fry them when it's time to eat for dinner now that the french fries are in the oven i start to work on getting the chicken wings ready because this is a two-step process now i have a full video on how i make my chicken wings i will make sure to link that below and at the end of the video in that video i also share with you all how i make our homemade dressings that go with our chicken wings i make homemade ranch and blue cheese i did not however put that in this video because i already had 
the ranch made and so there was no need to make some additional ranch but anyway so you want to get your chicken wings prepped and ready um, you could leave them whole we however prefer them to be in sections again I only had one family pack because I was doing multiple different things for this um, football party I didn't need to do a ton of wings but obviously you can increase decrease as what works best for your family so what I do is it's a two-step process I will partially cook them in the oven usually for 45 minutes at 400 degrees and then I will pull them out and then I will deep fry them and by doing that is you're cooking them through yet when you pull them out of the oven they're not quite crispy yet and by putting them in the deep fryer you get give them a nice crispy crunchy outside but yet they're still very tender on the inside and so once I have all my chicken wings cut I add in some additional olive oil on top because you want to make sure that your chicken wings don't stick to the pan sometimes it's inevitable but you want to try to put as much oil as you can to keep them from sticking now I have found by adding in a little bit of seasoning this night I use Nashville hot seasoning sometimes I'll use Cajun sometimes I'll just use salt and pepper either way I add a little seasoning to it and then I get it mixed in on the wings because what that'll do is as it's baking it'll infuse the wings so then when you deep fry it you're adding in just an additional level of flavor to the chicken wings so once I get my hands washed we are going to move on to a new sauce recipe that I created to go with the chicken wings for that night my chicken wings are in the oven and they're cooking and while they're doing that I'm gonna try to knock out a few other things for our food for this night I decided to go ahead and make the sauce for the chicken wings this is my take on taco max honey twang I don't know what their recipe is it's just something I created based on a description of what they had in their sauce plus a secret ingredient um, it years ago when I looked it wasn't anything online that may have changed since now but this is just my take and it works well and we all love it I make the sauce every time I make chicken wings now in my bowl I've added in one fourth cup of honey and to that I am adding in one fourth cup of yellow mustard and you want to make sure that you're using yellow mustard not stone ground not Dijon not even honey mustard you want the twang that comes from the yellow mustard um, also after you've added in the mustard I'm gonna you want to add in a half a cup of barbecue sauce now you want to make sure this is a sweet thick sauce not a vinegar based sauce um, you definitely need that sweet and that thick to help create this wing sauce now that that's been added I'm adding in one quarter cup of brown sugar and it seems a little odd that you would want to add in the brown sugar but because of the twang that's in there from the mustard and then the apple cider vinegar that's coming next next excuse me that sugar helps to balance all of that out so this is what I thought maybe is their secret ingredient which was a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and then to that I'm just going to add a couple of splashes of Tabasco you can add a little bit more a little bit less it depends the more you add the more heat you're going to give the sauce wing sauce is done and now it's time to move on to the cheese dip that will go in the bottom of our pan and be topped with chorizo sausage um, this cheese dip is almost identical if not identical to what you get at a Mexican restaurant and it is really easy to make once I realized how simple it was I make it all the time from scratch it is just one pound of white American cheese and you can see I'm slicing it and then we'll be cubing it and to that I'm adding in one cup of milk and so once I get all of my cheese sliced and cubed and it goes into my pot now I made sure I got a heavy 
pot to cook it in. If your pot is too thin, you can easily scorch your cheese dip, which you don't want to do. So once it's cubed, the milk is added. I then put it over a low heat and just let it start to melt slowly. You don't want to do it too, too quickly, or you could scorch it, or you could get it too hot where the cheese then separates, the fat from the cheese separates into the milk. And then you've almost in a sense like curdled your cheese dip and you don't want to do that so you can add jalapenos to this if you want i opted to leave them out this time just so our daughter could enjoy it without it being too spicy There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erased So catch me if I fall Okay, my cheese and milk are on the stove and I've got it on low and while that's starting to melt I'm gonna work on the french fries so I'm trying to kind of get everything done so all the food comes out at one time now my key to making really good french fries is this wagyu beef tallow it is not something that I use every time I make french fries but it is something I use on special occasions or if I'm just feeling like we really would love to eat those fries. But again, it is most of the time I am making homemade fries, tossing them in olive oil and baking them in the oven is how I do it. Um, to my pan, I am adding in the beef tallow that I already had used in the past. Once I use it and then it cools, I add it to my mason jar and then put it in the refrigerator. That keeps it um, fresh a lot longer and then um, it doesn't go rancid at all and so I would recommend that if you do decide to try it with the beef tallow make sure that you pull this out a couple hours ahead of time so it can come to room temperature it wasn't quite room temperature so it was a little difficult to get out of the jar as you can see it just did not want to come out Okay, now that I've got my deep beef tallow melting, I come over to check on my cheese dip. And as you can see, it's starting to warm up and the cheese is starting to melt. So once this happens, I usually will grab a whisk to start whisking it together. So the key to this is to not let it get so hot that it causes the cheese to separate and then begin to curdle in the milk. So once you really are getting it where you can see like you need the whisk, the cheese is melting, turn the heat off and then just keep whisking until all the cheese is melted. And once that, once we, once I reach that state, all I did was move it to the back of the stove top. So that way it stayed warm. And as it got closer to time to serve, I turned it back on to kind of warm it up a little bit to make sure it would pour really nicely. And then that was it. It is done and it was super simple and easy. And again, if you want to add jalapenos to it, you would do it at this point once the cheese has completely melted. But again, watch that temperature. Don't let it get too, too hot because it's really easy to cause it to separate. I've done it, trust me, more times than I care to admit. So I've learned that once it starts to melt, I just turn off the heat and just keep whisking until it's completely combined together. Okay, you can see this is what the cheese dip looks like after I was done stirring it. You can see how thick it became. It will continue to thicken as it cools, but this is what you are looking for. This is the consistency that you need for the cheese dip. Now, in this whole process, I had already turned on my oil for my chicken wings. And again, I have a full video on how I make 
these chicken wings and so I will link that below and at the end of this video so you can check that out but you can see in the video that my chicken wings looked cooked but they're not crispy yet and so that is the point of placing them in the oil is to get them a nice crispy level so that way once you toss them in the sauce the sauce does not sog out the skin on the chicken wing that is one thing I personally do not like it all and so that's why I decided to start cooking them this way and at first I thought it would be a special occasion when I would do this and now it has turned into every time that I make chicken wings this is just how I do it I've gotten used to it now I know ahead of time that it's a two-step process I plan accordingly and it's worth it every single time to make the chicken wings this way First time, a first day, you're so fine, I'm so late, you sip wine, I drink straight, don't waste time, to my place, I feel my heart erase, so catch me if I fall. While I have the chicken wings going on one side of the stove top, it's time to start the french fries on the other. And so as you can see, the french fries are soft and that is because I par baked them in the oven. And that's what's key to helping it be crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. And plus it takes a fraction of the time to cook them this way than if you did if you had just slice them and cook them from a raw state. So during this process, I'll be going back and forth between the French fries and the chicken wings until they are done. I like you, I can't wait. A first time, a first day. You're so fine, I'm so late. You sip wine, I drink straight. Don't waste time to my place. I feel my heart erase. So catch me in the Okay, while my french fries are cooking and the chicken wings are done, it is time to start on the chorizo sausage. We are getting close to it being dinner time. The game is already going at this point. Everyone's up and waiting, ready definitely to eat. I was kind of trying to time it so food would hit at least after the first quarter. And so I picked up some boiled peanuts from our farmer's market the morning of and they were snacking on that while I was getting the rest of this put together so just remember that when you are cooking chorizo sausage it may be a little difficult by color to see if the sausage is cooked all the way through because of all that paprika it gives it all the same color when you're putting it together your pork will be sticky it'll form like a patty but as you're cooking it it will begin to crumble and so what you're looking for is for all your meat to crumble and usually once I've reached the crumble state I will let it cook for about another minute or two and then turn it off and then it's completely cooked through and then I don't have a problem and so while the sausage is cooking I'm also working on getting the french fries in and getting them nice and crispy and so and getting those in stages um, the first batch of french fries that I did I pulled them out just a touch early and they weren't quite as crispy as I wanted them to so I pulled them out let them drain for a minute and then pop them back in and that's what you're going to see in a moment when I pull them out it wasn't an intentional double fry I just pulled them out a little too soon again everything was going on and so I thought they were ready when they weren't so you know what if that happens just pop them back in there real quick and as you can see they're nice and golden brown now and no one could tell that I accidentally had to, not accidentally, I had to fry them twice to get them to the crispy level that I was looking for. Make sure to top your french fries with salt if you can have salt and then that way that just enhances that 
flavor from the beef tallow. Now I did put, once the french fries were done, I did stick everything in the oven just to keep it warm. The oven was already off, but it was still warm, not enough to cook anything, but enough to keep everything nice and warm. While I was finishing up the french fries and starting to work on finishing up the tree. So I realized I had completely forgotten about the jalapeno poppers. And so I turned the oven back on real quick to get it warmed up. And then was like, I really need to get these in because these take 15 to 20 minutes to cook. And I knew that because of the timing of everything else that these were going to have to come out after everyone had gotten their plate which was fine it was not a big deal it's so easy to do it was in a glass container in the fridge and i just missed it now how i do my poppers is once they're filled i then top the tops of them with panko breading now i use gluten-free panko breading so our daughter can enjoy them she loves jalapeno poppers she can usually only eat one because they can tend to be spicy but i still do it for that and no one notices the difference but you basically just roll them at the top in the panko breading and then once they're all completely coated then you go and you top it with melted butter and so this just gives the jalapeno popper you're going to have the heat from the jalapeno the melty from the cheese and then a little bit of a crunch from the panko and the butter that's on top and then it's not it's not fried because so many other things were it's not heavy because it's not completely battered and deep fried and there's this big thick coating on there i believe that's why i created the recipe the way i did was because we enjoyed jalapeno poppers but i didn't enjoy how heavy they were so anyways now that those are in the oven it is time to start plating and assembling the rest of our food and so i've got the cheese dip i had turned it on low to make sure that um, it was at the right consistency that I was looking for, and it was. And so I've got it into my serving dish, and on for this, I'm gonna top it with all that chorizo sausage that we cooked, and I'll be serving it with tortilla chips. And this was a big hit, this was super yummy. You don't even have to make this for a game, you can just do this for dinner and make it as chorizo nachos. You know, that's another thing that we do too with our chorizo sausage is just turn them either tacos or nachos. And this is a quick, easy way to do it. But if you're having a party or you need an appetizer, this is a great option for that is just having the chorizo sausage on top of your cheese dip. Now that the chorizo and cheese dip is out on the counter, I am getting the chicken wings ready. I just put all of the chicken wings in the bowl and I toss it with the sauce. I usually don't do that when I'm making it just for us because my husband likes to make it spicier than my girls and I like it. And so usually when it's just the four of us, we'll do it individually. However, for this group, I decided just to toss it all the same for everybody and then if he wanted to add more or of something else he could and so you just want to give them a really good toss to get that sauce incorporated onto the wings so that way it gets in every nook and cranny of that crispiness that you created when you were deep frying it because that's just what takes it to another level because it'll hold its crispiness against the sauce without sogging out because to me there's nothing worse than biting into a soggy chicken wing. Chicken wings are plated up and now it's time to get the fries ready and get them out. Everybody was getting hungry. Timing was still right on target however just being in the kitchen everyone kept smelling everything I was making and they were definitely ready to eat so for that night's dinner we had the honey twang chicken wings a side of homemade ranch our homemade french fries we also had the chorizo in the cheese dip we had mango pico de gallo tomatilla salsa fresh guacamole that was all picked up from our local farmers market we had the tortilla chips to go with all of that potato chips to go with the caramelized onion dip and then for dessert we had the banana dip with fresh strawberries which was the perfect ending to that meal 10 minutes after we had taken our plates the jalapeno poppers were done and this is what they look like huge hit 
everyone loved them. We only had a couple left by the time we were done. Now, I just want to thank each and every one of you for joining me on this journey as I share a variety of different foods with you. I know I'm still just a young channel, but I really am having a wonderful time sharing different recipes and ideas. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I, I would really appreciate it. Um, and if nothing else, just like this video, that goes a long way too. But I just want to say I really, truly do appreciate each and every one of you. That I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. Damn, what a hell of a view. I feel good. You look great. I like you. I can't wait. A first time. A first day.